So I'm delighted this morning to be with uh, Luke Skelton. I, I don't really do many interviews with property sources as such. Um, although the more conversations I have, it's more about how important the source is, how important the deal is, more than the finance. Now, I'm not trying to alienate finance companies there whatsoever, but the deal seems to be the trickier thing to find right now, uh, certainly to source. I'm really delighted this morning to be with Luke. Uh, Luke Skelton, who I've known for, I don't know how many years, but at least three, four, maybe five years. So I, I met Luke at Pin Wandsworth, which has been going since 2010, celebrating his anniversary this April, his seventh year anniversary. Luke, I'm really delighted that you can join me this morning. Your, your background is in construction engineering. One of, I, I love listening to other interviews as well. They often, uh, Mike Stenhouse particularly, and he often asks the question, if you're background is in construction does it actually help or hinder i know it's a slightly um off the ball question uh, yeah. but I, I do like that question from mike so we're going to your background and then we go into how you fitted into property in terms of going forward into answering that question as well sure brendan yeah no thanks for that introduction it was actually um, getting back to where we met. Wandsworth Property Meet I went to, I think, in 2010 when it was uh, in Putney before you moved it to Wandsworth. When we're at, is it, was it the Coat and Badge? Yeah, the Coat and Badge. Yeah, that's when I, I first came along. There was like six or six, seven, eight maybe, very small. It was good. It was nice and intimate. So, yeah, that's where we first met. Your query about um, construction and whether it helps or hinders, it, it definitely helps. Um, I mean, most of the stuff I worked on was large scale civil projects. So it wasn't necessarily small resi stuff, but um, I think just in terms of using things like AutoCAD and you know, measuring, dealing with contractors is probably a big one that helps in, in our game and our business. So yeah, it definitely, it definitely helps, um, but not necessarily directly transferable. Sure. Uh, and so what made you do the shift of the jump from, being in a nice job, high paid, I presume, because of what you were doing in terms of construction, to moving in a very, I, I say risky, you know, or what some people may say risky. Some people may say staying in a job, not knowing what the future ho holds is actually more risky. So but what, what made you take that leap of faith? I think the big driver for me was actually to have that freedom and flexibility of having your own business. And I'd always had an interest in property before even I went into construction, though I'd never, um, I'd never bought anything. I just had an interest in it. Um, and you're right. Yeah. I was, I was being paid well. I was working contracts, so I was paid well. Um, but for me, it was the, you know, having to work either 10 or 12 hour days, which I often did, and having to be there at 7 a.m. in the morning and you know, sort of six or seven in the evening. Whereas I knew that with, with property and having your own business, you could have that freedom of flexibility. And now's a perfect example. Now that I've got my own business, Friday actually, I um, don't know if you saw my post on Facebook, Brendan, but I went to the driving range and hit some golf balls. Um, I went to the gym at lunchtime. So things like that, you know, that, that you, I couldn't otherwise do in a job. I mean, I don't have kids yet, but I'm uh, planning to, but not yet. Um, but I'd love to be able to take them to school, pick them up from school, go to their concerts, whatever. And um, I think that was the main driver for me that I wanted to have that freedom and flexibility of time. Sure. What, what I notice on, on your Facebook page straight away is your paddle boarding, to be fair. Um, the stand up paddle boarding, yeah. That was, yeah. Uh, my honeymoon in the Maldives last year so yeah that was that was amazing but yeah I've, obviously I've, um, I've I'm from Australia I've not grown up here so um, yeah growing up on the on a beach so yeah surfing and paddleboarding and those types of things are, are quite natural to you as well possibly and not to myself but who, who's who's done it once in my life and uh, I wouldn't say not again but no, not not a natural and, and that's possibly because you've been in the surroundings and in a way you're in the surroundings right now by attending property networking meetings myself my own meets and i know you're involved in pin clapham as well um i haven't been to that one yet but i'm sure i, I will be at some point um but in, in terms of going forward from moving out of the 7 a.m starts which which i hear 
um, to having more flexibility in terms of time. What, what made you specialize in, in property sourcing? And most of your property sourcing strength is within uh, Greater London, looking at zones two stroke three, Southwest and Southeast London. So you've got really hardcore niches. I know you're expanding this year as well. You're, you're looking at East and North. Um, what, what, what made you do look at going um, in terms of sourcing? I can understand it from the conversations I've had with loads and loads of people who say, look, the deals we can't find and money is there. Yeah, I think, Brendan, for me, it probably comes down to what your strength area is. Different people do different things. But for me, I probably part of my strengths with obviously having an engineering background is maths. Um, so the ability to appraise opportunities and, and find opportunities and also probably, I guess, another function of apart from my background as what I did in my job um, is all the stuff that I've learned on various courses. Um, I've done a lot of in courses. That's how I first actually came into property. It was meeting Simon Zucci. Uh, I saw him speak at a, a property investor show that I saw an advert in the Metro for coming home from work one day. And um, that's actually what got me started in property. It was, um, it was meeting him. And I think through a lot of the training courses that I've done and being taught how to find motivated vendors and, um, you know, all the different marketing campaigns that you do. I think that's just because of what I've learned and also a combination of, of my background, I just sort of naturally fall into sourcing and that's probably what I guess I'm good at. Um, whereas other things that I'm, I'm probably not so good at, maybe other people that's more suitable for them to do other, other things. So yeah, I think that's why it's just sort of a, I think a natural strength area that I've developed through my background and a combination of what I've learned over the years since, since doing property since 2009. Sure. I was going to say, look, so this coming Thursday evening, you're on the Central London panel. I'm really delighted. It's, it's quite an interesting, diverse panel, um, looking at strategies to get out of the rat race in 2017. Look, your sourcing is, is definitely one of the strategies we're going to look at, and you're sort of like the main person on that panel. Um, I have to admit, though, um, not because I've skewed it completely myself, but I'm sure there's a little bit of bias crowdfunding does come up there as well um although in terms of sources crowdfunding probably is a great avenue as well not necessarily for you to you know consider moving into crowdfunding and putting your deals onto crowdfunding platforms but maybe liaising with uh people who've used a crowdfunding platforms themselves or potentially uh relationships with them at some point um i, I know you do find um um, I, I know you do find, uh, Luke, um, successes and benefits in terms of being involved in terms of use, utilizing sourcing. But where do you think the market's going to go in, in terms of property? Do, do you think um, that crowdfunding is here to stay? Do you think it's just here for a short period of time? Yeah, I think, I think crowdfunding is a good way to go. And you're certainly um, the likes of, you know, Nicole Bremer and, and others that we've seen. There's actually a lot of people in my network that, um, that I'm, I'm, I've done masterminds. So I'm, I'm sort of um, often at mastermind events. And um, a lot of the people on mastermind actually have, have used their developments and put those onto crowdfunding platforms. I mean, just uh, you've only got to get on the tube, haven't you, and see that there's more and more... Uh, crowdfunding platforms, not just within property, but other spaces popping up. So uh, I think it's definitely here to stay for a while. Um, and, and as you say, it's a, as a sourcer, it's probably a great avenue to uh, to promote some of those deals and not necessarily pass on those deals uh, to someone else. Maybe you can put it on a platform and, and do the do the project yourself. Um, yeah, that, that, that's why. What I was wondering, Luke, in a way, why haven't you considered utilizing those crowdfunding? platforms yourself or is that a potential yeah i have looked at a few um there's some expenses incurred up front with some of them um you've got the equity based ones you've got the peer-to-peer -peer. so there's there's certainly an, an avenue there uh the, the thing for us i guess is that we have um quite a long uh, catalog of investors ourselves who've sort of put their hand up to either don't venture with us or to pay us a sourcing fee for the for the properties that we're finding. So 
for us, I guess, it's probably not something we've considered too great because there hasn't been a need and we almost need to satisfy our existing client base before we go off and start looking at other avenues. So, But you're right, it, uh, it's a space that's uh, definitely to be watched. Sure. Look, Luke, you, you were discussing with me before we went online and we will share with the listeners who can't make this coming Thursday evening, the Central London Property Me. And as I say, it's a diverse panel on that particular panel. So the likes of Carolina Adam Chick, who has actually used uh, Simple Equity Platform Strength is Interior Design. We've also got Tor Portes, who's used... Um, uh, crowdfunding well he's got his own crowdfunding platform crowd with us yep. we've also got am camp who's also benefited from crowdfunding but you know it's not just crowdfunding that particular night and it is you know i'm, I'm going to have some key questions focused on sourcing because sourcing from what i understand luke is one of the lower entry points into the property investment world as such yep. um yep. What would you say to people thinking, uh, you know, look, we, we, we may not be able to finance deals. We, we might not consider using crowdfunding yet. However, we might look at the options of going into sourcing. Mm. Now, what do you think about people going into sourcing? Who, who's it for? Who's ideally it for in terms of what, what personality do you need, need to have? What skill set as well? Yeah, I think... Um it's definitely, you know, as you say, Brendan, it's one of those things that you can go into with low, low entry, if you like, not a lot of upfront costs. Um, it can cost, depends on your marketing spend. Um, but um, it, I guess it suits different types of people and it's something that you can probably do in parallel to your job before you take the, the big leap of faith like I have and start your own business. You can actually just do it part time. So, you know, building relationships with agents is, is one thing. And then learning how to find vendors off market is another thing. There's a, there's a whole heap of different strategies you can implement with that from dropping leaflets to writing letters to, to social media marketing. So there's a whole heap of stuff that you can do um, for fairly low, low cost. You can obviously build that as your business gets bigger and start employing people as, as we have. We've started to, to grow our team, as you mentioned earlier. So um, it, it suits anyone who really is who's looking for um, opportunities to work in property and, and secure fees. So sourcing fees generally attract anywhere between 1% and 5% of the purchase price. So let, let's take a £500,000 property in London, 2%, that's, that's ten grand. So that can quite easily and quickly replace somebody's job income and you know, doing one deal a month. So very lucrative. And then obviously if you start meeting people, investors and, and connecting with them and selling those opportunities to them, which you obviously need to do, you need to have a, a client base. Then you can um, also possibly joint venture with those people, which it can be even more lucrative than just your sourcing fees. Luke, so I just want to touch base. So I know some people may not be able to make this Thursday, it's school holidays, half term and so forth to 16th. Now that doesn't mean you you can't connect with Luke either online or possibly offline because Luke is at Blackfriars Pin on the 24th. Have I got the date right? Tuesday the 28th, I'll be speaking at Blackfriars Pin, Brendan, yeah. So um, now if you want to know more about Blackfriars Pin, I would suggest you send Luke a personal message, connect with Luke and you can find out more. Um, Luke might even have a voucher code. I, I really don't know. And you, you need to discuss with Luke that. Um, but there are ways to hear Luke apart from um, myself on this YouTube channel. I'd, I'd love to go into a bit more depth. But that's the beauty of coming to something like whether it's my panel this coming Thursday evening or whether it's going to Blackfriars Pin or maybe catching up with you, Luke, or just sending you an email. I'm sure you're going to be speaking at some point in a lot more depth at one of my meets as well. We haven't really covered the online, offline, you know, looking at, you know, the skill sets on the online, offline. I'm, I'm sure some of the investment you've you spent in terms of training has been on the online as well, um, utilizing and strengthening uh, possibly your social media, possibly Facebook. Uh, maybe you've looked at Facebook ads as well. 
that there's so many questions I have for you, Luke. What would your one nugget, and I know this is so hard because you've got a four, I don't know how long your presentation is, 25, 50 at, at Blackfriars Bin, but what would your, 25, what would your one nugget of advice be to someone who's thinking, look, sourcing sounds great. Look, it can be low key or low cost. It can be part time. So we don't need to do this quite yet. We don't need to go into full time. It's not necessarily the cost of doing uh, rent to rent, which does involve some significant cost or can involve significant costs. Absolutely. So um, what would your one bit of advice be one nugget to potentially people thinking of going into sourcing? I think uh, it's hard to pin it down to one, Brendan. Um, so let me give you a few, and okay. then you can choose one out of that lot. But definitely, the, the probably the, the top thing for me anyway was to educate, get educated, and, and connect with other investors. So go to the various courses. As I said, I've been through a lot of PIN courses and can highly recommend them. Um, subscribe to your Property Network magazine. That's fantastic. Also, Property Investor News. Read some of the articles in there. There's loads of books out there as well. Buy them on Amazon, get them on Audible, listen to them on the tube. There's loads of podcasts and webinars, do some research. And then, yeah, connect with other investors. Also, um, follow up with people, schedule Skype calls or, or coffees, and um, set up your right move and Zoopla alerts. Um, build those relationships with agents so that you can be one of the first person or a couple of people into a property and then also um, outsource and leverage your time where you can. Um, there's, there's great people across the world. We use something called Upwork, which a lot of people have probably come across. So we use people in uh, the Philippines and Pakistan to do a lot of our admin and research and comparables, lots of stuff. So um, there's a whole host of things there. I think I've mentioned uh, six or seven things there, Brendan, but um, if I had to pick one, I guess the starting point would be to, to get yourself educated and con connecting with people. Sure. Look, I, I, I can easily go on for hours and hours, and, and that, that's a bit unfair for me to do. Um, so I know you're speaking for me at some point. It's more or less when your diary allows you because I know you're quite busy. Um, so we, we have to sort out a date in terms of a longer presentation. Um, Luke, how can people people connect with you? So, um, what's the yeah. easiest? Yeah, best way to connect is either via our website, which is thepropertysource.eu, um, and then social media wise, I'm I'm quite active on social media. So, Facebook, LinkedIn, Luke Skelton um, is my name. So you can find me quite easily there. And likewise for for our business, the Property Source, you'll find us on on social media as well. So that would be the best way. Otherwise, come and see me talk at uh, on Thursday night on your panel or um, or Blackfriars Pin. Blackfriars Pin. Uh, best way to probably book onto that one is via pinmeeting.co.uk and select the Blackfriars. There's about 50 pin meetings across the country. So, but yeah, just find Blackfriars and um, and see you there. Is is there a code which is accessible if they haven't been to a pin meeting before? Do they have that, Luke, anymore? Or? There, there is, um, but I'll have to get in contact with Fraser McDonald to find out what that is. Um, okay. So, in touch with me, I can let them know what it is if they haven't been to a pin meeting before. Sure. And I, would, I just want to say huge thanks for you taking time out this morning. I want to say huge thanks to the listeners as well. Um, and I'd love for the listeners to let me know what questions you want me to ask. Now, of course, some of my listeners may not be able to come to uh, live events. I do have, uh, I know coming up in the next few weeks, my one day event, which will be going on video, likely be going on a platform called v uh, Vimeo. Um, so that's my one day event. Um, and that's less of me and much more of the speakers. Um, so just want to say huge thanks for you taking time out, Luke, today. No, thanks for having me, Brendan. Look forward to being on the panel on Thursday and listening to Anna and Stefan's uh, story as well. Yeah, I, I didn't say it's Anna and Stefan who have got the story of, of how in less than two years they've done £10 million worth of uh, sourcing and developing property. What what they, I have to admit, what they've done is slightly different to what some people do in terms of focus on an area, but they focus on areas which they know. So Stefan, from what I know, is uh, based or 
uh, lived in Portsmouth. So Portsmouth, they've also looked at property in Manchester and uh, a few other areas as well. Currently working on a 22 unit development in Manchester. So that's a really good shout. So it's both the panel plus there's also going to be um, the presentation from Anna and Stefan. And it's going to be less of me because it's Julie Hogman who's going to be chairing the panel. So I'll be quite out of the limelight that particular evening. And there's going to be a short uh, property finance update with Augustus Oyenke Lumia. Um, so huge thanks for you taking time out, Luke, this morning. Ah, thank you, Brendan. It's been great and, yeah, really looking forward to Thursday. So have a great week. Okay, you too. Bye for the moment, Luke. And thank you to the listeners.